Hi everyone. When we left yesterday, Jack had been yanked up, feet first up into the air. So chapter three is called, Wow? Jack, cried Annie. The skinny dog barked and jumped around happily. Jack was hanging a few feet off the ground with a rope around his ankle. His glasses and hat and bag had fallen to the ground. Jack felt the blood rushing to his head. I must have stepped into a hunting trap, he said in a strangled voice. How would you like to be hanging upside down like that? I'll free you, Annie said. She tried to reach the rope, but it was just too high. Jack heard the voices over the wild barking of the dog. A blur of people gathered around him and Annie. Oh, mercy, a woman cried. We've caught a boy, a man said. The dog licked Jack's face. Help, said Jack. A burly man shooed the dog away and then grabbed Jack. Another cut the rope with a knife. Then they gently lowered Jack to the ground. Jack sat in the leaves, feeling dizzy. He took the rope off his foot and rubbed his ankle. Here, said Annie, handing Jack his glasses, hat, and bag. He put them all on and stood up. Now he could see. About 40 or 50 pilgrims, men, women, and lots of children, stared at him and Annie. Some of the children were laughing. The girls were dressed just like the women, and the boys were dressed just like the men. One person, though, looked different from everyone else in the crowd. His skin was brown. A deer skin hung over his shoulder. His black hair was braided, and he had a feather in it. Is that Squanto? Jack wondered. The Wampanoag Indian who helped out the pilgrims? Two pilgrim men stepped forward. One had a smile on his face. The other was frowning. Good day, the friendly looking man said. Who art thou? I'm Annie, said Annie. This is my brother, Jack. We come in peace. Well, welcome to Plymouth Colony, said the man. I am Governor Bradford. This is Captain Standish. Captain Standish kept frowning. He kept a long gun over his shoulder. Oh, wow, said Annie. Wow, said Captain Standish. Wow, whispered others as if they didn't understand. I, I just heard a lot about you, said Annie. She looked around. Is Priscilla here? Shh, whispered Jack. I am Priscilla, said a young woman. She looked about 17 or 18. Her face looked weary and her eyes were sad. Hi, said Annie shyly. I, I was you. Annie, warned Jack. Thou was me? Priscilla asked. She sounded puzzled. Never mind, my sister, said Jack. She's nuts. Nuts, repeated Priscilla. Nuts, whispered the others. Oh, brother, said Jack with a nervous laugh. Oh, brother, repeated Priscilla. Annie giggled. Never mind, said Jack. That's just how we say things at home. And where is thy home? Captain Standish asked. He didn't sound as friendly as Governor Bradford or Priscilla. Um, we live in a village up north, said Jack. Our parents sent us here to, um, he remembered something from their research book, uh, to learn how to grow corn. But how and when did your family come to America? The captain asked. Jack was worried. Now that he had started making up a story, he couldn't go back. He couldn't back out. Luckily, he remembered something else from the book. We sailed to America with Captain John Smith, he said, when he was exploring the coast. Annie and I were just babies then. Ah, indeed, said Governor Bradford. Jack nodded. Indeed, he said. I believe Squanto knew Captain John Smith when he was in Plymouth, said Captain Standish. Perhaps he remembers thee. Everyone in the crowd turned to the man with the braid. Oh no, thought Jack. He knew Squanto wouldn't remember them. These children say they sailed with Captain John Smith, Governor Bradford said to Squanto. Does thou remember two wee babes named Jack and Annie? Squanto moved closer to Jack and Annie. He looked carefully at their faces. Jack held his breath. His heart pounded. Squanto turned to the governor. Yes, he said quietly. I remember. Chapter four, we fish. Annie grinned. Good day, Squanto, she said. 
Good day, Annie, said Squanto. He smiled at her and Jack. Jack was too surprised to speak. Why did Squanto say he remembered us, he wondered. Is he mistaking us for two other kids? Captain Standish looked surprised too, but Governor Bradford smiled warmly. Tis a wonder, he said. We welcome all the small folks sent to us. Children are a gift from God, no matter where they come from. Well, that's a nice way of looking at things, Jack thought. Just then, a boy ran up. Chief Massasoit is here with 90 men, he shouted. The boy pointed to a long line of men walking down a path near the cornfield. Chief Massasoit walked ahead of the others. His face was painted red. He wore a fur robe and white beads. Governor Bradford, Captain Standish, and Squanto went to meet the visitors. Mercy, a pilgrim woman whispered. All the pilgrims looked worried. Art thou afraid? Annie asked. Oh, no, said Priscilla. We invited Chief Massasoit and his men to our harvest feast, but we did not expect so many. We've not prepared enough food. Governor Bradford and Squanto spoke to the chief. Then Squanto led a number of men into the woods, and the governor walked back to the pilgrims. The Wampanoag men will hunt more deer, he said, but we must also bring more food to the table. Priscilla, please tell the young folk what they must do. The grown-ups went back to the village as the pilgrim kids gathered around Priscilla. She told some to carry water or to set up tables. She told others to gather vegetables or hunt small animals. Once the kids were given their jobs, they rushed off to do them. Finally, only Jack, Annie, and a small girl holding a big basket were left. Jack, would thou like to go fowling with the boys? Priscilla asked him. She pointed to a group of boys who had just headed off with the dog. Jack stared at her in panic. What does she mean, he wondered. What's fowling? Annie asked. Thou dost not know, said the little girl. Tis hunting water birds, of course. Jack doesn't know how to do that, said Annie. Tis true? How dost thou eat and live? The little girl asked curiously. We, um, Jack froze. We catch fish, said Annie. We do, thought Jack. Ah, good, said Priscilla. Then I bid thee bring back as many eels and clams as thou can. We have near 150 mouths to feed. Priscilla took the basket from the small girl and gave it to Annie. We will see thee later, Priscilla said, waving. Mary and I must go help with the cooking. Um, said Jack, but before he could ask any questions, Priscilla and the little girl started back to the village. So do you think Jack and Annie are going to be able to fish? They've never done it before. We'll find out tomorrow. Bye.